Well, hello and a warm welcome on a cold December day out here in my summer house. Now, most of my art now I'm doing indoors in the warm next to the open fire, which is a log fire. Now, unfortunately, out here in the summer house it gets cold this time of year and I don't want my paper or my pencils to get damp. So, for a little while now, I've been doing video films probably since late 1990s. I've been doing video films. Originally started off with big old VHS tapes and a super VHS tape. Then I went into digital video tapes. Now I've been looking through my archives of my old videos and I don't think I changed that much in 20 odd years. But 2005 I done a video and I transferred it to a DVD disc, Exmoor Underfoot. So sit back and I hope you enjoy it. The journey is going to start in Simmons Bath. Now Simmons Bath is a lovely little village in the centre of the old Royal Forest of Exmoor. Not a forest of trees, but a hunting area. Our walk is going to take on the high country of Exmoor, with open fields and farmland to start with, and heading back across the moorland, heading down to the River Bar taking in the prehistoric remains of Cow Castle and an old abandoned mine and then heading back to Simmons Bar, a journey of approximately 8 miles. This imposing church was built by the Knight family around about the 19th century and there remains a memorial to the Knight family in the churchyard. It's quite a small hamlet, one or two houses, some ruined houses as well. These lovely old stone buildings, I think they should be restored at some stage. Someone may have started on this one. So heading right out of the car park, we pass the Exmoor Forest Hotel. The first by is the lovely craft shop of a local pottery. And continuing just past there, we come to the small gate where we go up the track, heading towards Birch Cleave. We're going to take the track to Lanaka via Pitch Stones, following the Blue Wayne. As we head uphill with this lovely canopy of birch trees, we note that there aren't any birch trees around. These are all tall beech trees. And these lovely old trees are currently in their spring leaves.
A marvellous collection of wild birds you can hear chirping away in the distance. Now this root comes from one of the old fallen trees from way back in the storms of uh, the early 80s. As I continue up the hill, I happen to note what's that in the distance? Oh, to my surprise, a lovely carving of a horse's head. And I think, what oh, a great idea of making good use of these old fallen trees by creating carvings out of them. I'm still continuing following the blue way marks. We can continue climbing uphill slightly. But what's this? Is this the old beast of Exmoor? Oh, it's another carving. Marvellous. And some more as well. Someone's certainly been at it right here with a chainsaw. I know for a fact that one of the local park wardens uh, does a lot of carving. I expect it's him. <laughs> Anyway, we continue now, to sort of the hollows we can get, and we're now going to pass through some muddy gateways and across the open field. And one of the local residents. And a spring lamb. On the hills in the distance you can see the brown patches of where some of the burning had taken place, where they burn the old gorse off the fields, etc. Truly marvellous views up here. It's great to see these lovely little lambs. journey is now continuing across several open fields and through some muddy gateways. We need some good waterproof boots on up here. And look at the mud. <laughs> well, zooming in across the fields that's our destination, further across the fields, heading towards where the cows are and the sheep. Not much to see up here, but open views and some of the farm work, uh, anyway. All look a bit puzzled, though. Who am I? <laughs> Well, these old trees show some of the old coppicing that used to take place years ago. Nowadays you see tractors with the hedge trimmers just hacking away at the hedges. Not the same anymore. But certainly th this hedge has got a good old spring leaf on it. Well, we're now heading down slightly. We've gone across the high country, an open field, and the gorse bushes have just come out in flower. And somewhere on here in a moment there should be a bee. There she is. Have a honey. Our path 
now continues downhill to a sheltered little valley of white water. And standing beside a small this year's quarry stands the paltry remains of an old stone cottage. This is an area which is said to be haunted. It's because in this cottage there lived a William Burgess. And it is said, unfortunately, that he murdered his daughter here. I think he found the going was tough and couldn't afford to keep her. And so his only option for him was to kill her. Her body was taken across the hills and he dumped her in the nearby Wheeler Liza Mine, which is where I should take you later on in our trip. Nature's certainly got a hold of this old cottage now. It's also in this area that I saw some adders, so be very careful. This little stream is a stream of white water, and it leads out through the valley to the river bar. Well, we're now leaving this lovely little valley and heading uphill slightly. And I'm actually taking a photograph of an impressive hill fork. This hill standing isolated in the middle of the valley is that of Cow Castle. And on its summit is the Iron Age Ramparts. And close by is the appropriate name, the Calf, a little rocky hillock. And there's a closer view of the Iron Age ramparts on its summit of Coe Castle. These are the first walkers I've seen on the trip. I think most walkers head up down the bottom of the valley, close to the River Bar. But we're going to continue our journey over the high country heading across more open farmland. This is Pickstone's farm, a former Knight family farmstead. And more local residents and magnificent views. Well, now <laughs> heading back Across the farm we end up on moorland and the weather is actually turning for the worse. It's a strong wind and rain, typical of the next more spring, summer, autumn and winter. difference from three minutes ago. Well, we're now heading across the moorland, heading downhill towards the River Bow. And in the distance you can see Lanaka Bridge. Well, just coming off the wall now, down a little stony track, we head through the, low, the lowest farm gate, and we're now heading back on our journey. We know what no level in the valley beside the river bar.
Oh, Link. You tied that just right. <laughs> okay. Despite the rain, the river bar is still very picturesque at this time of the year. Well, we're now heading through a short piece of woodland. And right beside the river bar. Well, eventually you get down to the river bar and I've just found this lovely little piece of pottery in the water not planted there, it's how I just found it yeah, magic yes, I found the pottery but as yet I haven't discovered its age and how it ever got there Another local resident, a black slug. This bridge is actually where the Two Moors Way crosses over. And we're now close to the car, one of the prehistoric remains we saw a little while ago. Well, this rocky hill is in sharp contrast to the Co Castle, which is rather smooth, standing next door. So I've decided now to walk uphill over Co Castle to see what booze we can get from the top. And there we have it, the river bowl looking down from Co Castle on the ramparts. And we're still following the blue way mark. Well, the track goes slightly inland here, cutting across the field. And it's quite a surprise, it seems to end up straight in the river. Uh oh, here we are. There's some more workers. You can also hear in the background uh, a lot of the bird sounds. Now these are natural sounds I heard on the day. Well, we eventually reach the old Wheel of Those Mine. And these ruins are what left of the old stone cottages surrounding the mine. Now this former mine was developed during the 19th century by the Knight family. They did expect to find large amounts of copper, but iron ore was found instead. Unfortunately the quantity was so small that the mine ceased to exist after less than a decade. Well, I'm going to take you across the other side of the river bar now, over this lovely wooden bridge, just to look at some of the rebel remnants of the former wine. 
Well, it's on this side that you can see the old spoil heaps. And this is what is left of the old water wheel pit and leet. And from this side of the river, if you look back across, you can see the old mine shaft. And it was here that William Burgess hid the body of his young daughter after murdering her because she became a nuisance to him. Burgess later confessed to the murder and was hung in Taunton in 1858. leaving the mine and heading on our way back towards Simmons Bar. And here we can still get some magnificent views of the River Bar itself. Far from the river bar, high on the hills, are some Exmoor ponies. And this is what I saw on the day of filming. This rare breed of ponies is now more rarer than the panda. And they're hardy creatures out there in the wilds of the moors.
Well this is autumn time and I'm going to take you on a nice little walk looking for some rotting stacks. Well today we're going to look for some deer, some rutting stags with a bit of luck. We're starting off from Webber's Post and we're going to walk along just beneath Dunkery Beacon. Got my camouflage gear on. Ideal. Well, we're going to take a little path between Dunkery Beacon and Wooden Courtney. And as I progress along the path, I thought, this is strange, it's a gravestone. But later investigations proved that this is a boundary stone for Wooden Courtney. Now these are droppings of red deer, so I know I was on a fairly good track of finding them. Now I filmed all this in one day, then a sort of a, an afternoon, and this is my first stag I saw. It was quite a windy day. And close to the stag are his hinds. This is just the beginning of the rutting season in October. I think he saw me because off he went. And another young deer, what I called a pricket, so younger deer, and three hinds. And there he is again. Now these deer have got a real good sense of smell. I'm a fair old distance away from them, as you can see as I zoom out now. I knew I was, I was there all the time. So I got better of them really. I got to the, the, the wind side of them, so the wind actually blew their smell to me, not the way round, and crap up on them through the gorse bushes and on my stomach, etc. Here we are now, a little bit closer. I'm sitting behind a gorse bush. Quite uncomfortable. <laughs> There's lovely views here again, over towards the valley. Now I'm zoom zooming in here, you can just about make out a deer, or a stag, and his hind. You can see his antlers there. There's a view of Luckham Church in the distance. I spent about three hours sitting behind the gorse bush filming these deer. Very uncomfortable. And of course the deer are unpredictable as well, so be very careful if you do it yourself. Don't get too close to them. This is a view out towards Pollock Bay.
Well this stag is sort of bellowing to attract other stags so they can have a fight and take over the herd of hinds. Quite a handsome lad, this one. I didn't see any other deer who wanted to have a fight on this day. Though there were lots of other stags around. Well, the red deer are quite a, a numerous uh, wild animal, as if you like, on Exmoor. It's here and in Scotland that they're quite uh, popular. I've seen a lot. These faithful hinds stay fairly close to him. Yeah, I think he spotted me now. After sitting there for several hours, I was quite relieved really, because I was aching. My legs were aching, my back was aching. I didn't move in case they spotted me sooner. But he's quite a dignified chap. And he decided just to walk off. But, but keep looking back at me, just, just think, what's that? What's that spying on me? There he goes. <laughs> Still keep looking back. <laughs> that was all done in the little afternoon in October. So dear, how easy to find. 
Now he goes off into the distance. Well, next walk, I'm going to go on to the edge of the Brendan Hills, starting at Wedding Cross. Leaving Wedding Cross, we turn left out of the village car park and walking down the road about 100 yards before turning right into this green lane. Now we're heading down into the green lane and close by to these um, two hotels and guest houses. and another resident in the area. We seem to get a lot of cows and sheep in, on Exmoor. Well, we're now going to head through some lovely little woodland. Quite a nice spring day. Fairly warm as well for the time of year. That's a, a contrast to some of the rainy weather that we get. This is a little ground beetle, breathing away under, underneath your feet. Well, as you head through the woods, you do pass through one or two full gates. and more mud. And quite dense woodland in places. And damp as well, I suppose, with the elf fern and bracken and whatever. And the spring sunshine shining through the old leaves. Well, eventually, after coming through the woods, you reach another um, small roadway, really. It's not very busy. It's called uh, Draper's Way. Then we head downhill, we come very close to Snowdrop Valley. Well, Snowdrop Valley is uh, world famous and it's very popular at this time of the year. The visitors come from all over the place. These snowdrops are a real delight to see and uh, carpets on them all over the place.
Well just opposite the entrance to Snowdrop Valley is another small track and that's where we're going to head now. We're going to go a slight uphill way Look out for the fungus or fungi on the trees. Couldn't tell you the exact name of these. Now we have um, a fork in the pathway here. We take the right hand side and we're heading up towards the main A39 road. This is the Dunster to Wedding Cross Road. It's quite a busy road, so be careful when you cross on it. Well, we're right on the edge of the Brendan Hills here. And we're now going to head up through some more woodland. This time it's a different type of wood. It's big fir trees. And most of them have recently been felled. Strange the sort of different contrast between the different types of woodland. Well just here before we get to the top, have a quick look behind you at the view behind. Over towards Exmoor itself on the moorland. Now by passing through this field gate we come to more open fields. and a patchwork quilt of Exmoor fields. There's one nice thing about Exmoor, you can get really magnificent views on top of the hills. Just in front, to the left of the picture, is Dunkley Bacon. In the distance, that is. And sheep and cows in the distance with their little pin pricks. Well, we're now on the small track, which is heading towards Cutcoom. But let's have a look inside the church. Or in the churchyard anyway, to start with. This is Cutcombe Church. And amongst these lovely old gravestones, I come across two, which to me reminded me of maritime um, times. This one here, this gravestone's got uh, an anchor attached to it. Now we're leaving the church and go a foot past the foot opposite. And an old bio plane up above us. Unusual sight.
and a lovely view of the Brendan Hills of Exmoor. This area is more, is more farmland, where Exmoor itself is more moorland. Now by passing over a few fields, we eventually come through a small gate and this old ruined mill. I think there must have been an old farmstead nearby at one time, but the mill was long disused, the trees growing out of it, everything was ruined around there. But the National Park are actually cleaning up the area so you can, visitors can actually see it. We're now heading a bit further over to Kirsham Farm. I don't was there there's a generator running, so they, I don't think they had electricity in that house. It's quite a remote area actually. And the lovely hills basking in the sunlight. over the more fields and another green lane. This time it's right beside the old farm and it's a uh, oh, <laughs> a bit messy, covered in leaves and broken branches of trees. It's probably not used very often at all. Ideal place for walk. Now I did taste the water here, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's a bit salty. I don't think that was uh, salty water as such, but probably some old mineral or something from the nearby farm. Well, we're now heading really back to Wedding Cross where we originally started from. And this little road takes you back to the, the back side of the village. Now, one familiar sight all across Exmoor in the springtime is that of the spring lambs. And this little food is just of the food lambs playing. If you enjoyed this program, 
on the Rumbling About series, and I look forward to showing you more of Exmoor on the next one.